Greetings everyone and welcome back to a very random repair video. We're not going to be doing too much in this repair video. It's a very, very basic one, but as you can see in the title, we're repairing a folding phone. And that folding phone is the Motorola Razr 2020. Now if you aren't comfortable, you may want to get yourself comfortable because there's story time coming up. So, let's reverse ourselves back to the horrible year of 2020. I was in lockdown. I was very, very bored. I had nothing to do. Just like millions and millions of people around the world, we had absolutely nothing to do. So, as I was buying a whole heap of random stuff to review and just to buy for the sake of it, I was looking around and I found a Motorola Razr 2020 for $1,000. And I wanted a folding phone. This was going to be my first folding phone. And I spoke to the guy. We organized it so he was going to ship it out to me and it would be $850 that I'd be paying for it in total. The problem was it's kind of broken. The guy had the phone in his front pocket, was moving a couch into his garage, and the phone fell out of his front pocket, landed straight on the concrete and scraped along, and the whole front screen with the front OLED was completely damaged. The whole folding portion of the phone still works, and just as a reference, this is what it looked like. That OLED didn't work and the camera glass was cracked. So the plan was, I pay him, and then he sends it out to me, free shipping, and everyone's happy. That same night is the night that I found a Z Flip, brand new, on eBay for a thousand, and I had the money saved up, so I went with the Flip. And it was much more worth it going for the Flip as a practical daily driver than the Motor Razr 2020 due to the specifications. The Motor Razr 2020 is just horrible in terms of specifications, and because it's the first gen folding phone, it's super, super janky, and I'm very lucky that I didn't go with this as my first folding phone. So I had to tell the guy, I'm sorry, I've got to pass on the offer of this Motorola Razr. Good luck with the sale and I hope everything goes well. So then I have my Galaxy Z Flip. I tried that, loved it, and honestly, it was one of the best phones I have ever used in a long while. So everything was just plodding along. I'd completely forgotten about this Motorola. Then I got a message saying that he'd dropped the price from 1,000 to 500, and I thought, Nah, still not worth it. I'm going to give it a pass. I don't really need it at all. And because it was on Facebook Marketplace, it came up in my Facebook Messenger that he had reduced the price from 1000 to 500 And then it was about two months ago. I was just on Facebook Marketplace, just browsing, and then it said, Results from outside your search area, and it showed the Motorola Razr. It had been on there for almost one year without any movement whatsoever. And I figured, I'm going to message the guy and see if he wants to move it. I messaged him. I said, do you still have it? He said, I do. If you can come pick it up right now, you can take it for 300 bucks. And I went, I think that's a fairly good deal. So I drove like 100 kilometers to go pick up this phone, talked to the guy who was really, really nice about it. He said, it's just sitting here gathering dust. I'm not doing anything with it. Good luck with that sort of thing. And um, I handed over 300 bucks and I drove home with the Motorola Razr 2020. Got it home and straight away I could feel the absolute jankiness of this thing. So I thought to myself, I'm going to repair this. That's what I want to do. I want to repair this. So I went onto AliExpress and typed in Motorola Razr 2020 OLED and digitizer and all that sort of thing. Nothing came up. I went, okay, I'll try eBay. Tried there, nothing. Tried a couple of other sites, nothing. And I've went, where do you get parts for this thing then? Tried iFixit as well, nothing there as well. So I was kind of at my wits end and I thought, well, I'll call Motorola and see what they say. And that's when they quoted me $550 Australian to replace it. And I went, nah, 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 that's okay. So I found a site called Mobile Defenders. It's a wholesale company based in the USA who sells replacement parts for a lot of devices. And I found a replacement OLED screen 75 US and a front camera lens for $2 US plus $50 US for FedEx international shipping. And at that point in time, a couple of days after I bought the phone, it's about $170 Australian. I'm not going to pay that. I won't worry about it. I'll just leave it to the side. In the meantime, I pulled the front glass off and removed everything. So then I just had the parts laying around and I was going to throw them out, but luckily I didn't because I need to have this for the replacement. So yeah, this has just been sitting around. Eventually I checked AliExpress again and I found one for 320 US dollars. This is the only one I've come across and it's not actually for this model, it's for the 5G model. So it's useless. Eventually I moved the Samsung A20s that I had in my job lot video, one of the last ones. I moved those on eBay, had some PayPal funds, and then I went onto this Mobile Defenders website, ordered the screen, ordered the camera lens, Got it shipped out to me via FedEx. It literally took two days to get from the US to New South Wales in Australia. And FedEx Australia decided that they'd play games 
and not delivered the parcel properly, take it back to the FedEx facility, hold on to it. I went to go pick it up. They told me that they couldn't be bothered getting it out. It's the end of the day. Come back Monday. So I had to wait the weekend. It is now Monday. I went and picked it up. I finally have it. We're going to open it up and repair it. So there you go. Story time. Was that fun? Probably not. But you kind of get the whole gist of things now. From $1,000 to $850 to $500 to $300 bucks, plus the $173 Australian that I've paid for replacement parts, I'm going to have an under $500 Motorola Razr 2020 in reasonable condition, I hope. But, like, the box is better than the phone itself, to be fairly honest. Like, this here is just amazing. And then you slide that off like so just in case you wanted to see there's this rubber piece here which rubs up against the flexible oled display and it actually causes some scratches and scuff marks on it if it's just sitting in the box so if you have a razor 2020 as a collectible uh don't leave it in the box because it will do exactly that see these lines here that is what it will do but the box itself comes with these little sound channels here because you dock the razor in here like so and there you go you can play sounds and it's pretty cool it's like a speaker but there's no speaker in there it's just the plastic box itself then we have the little bag it comes with with all the accessories and stuff which is all in here and that's all good yeah it's pretty fancy packaging for a very meh device holding my z flip compared to this it feels like the flip was released at least three years after this this just does not feel as premium as that does. I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone. This is the hinge noise. I don't know either, but uh, it's fine for the most part, <laughs> I think. If we just do that like that, see, you can see the flex ribbons just there and like, it looks okay in its current state. It's just the whole, these flex ribbons, if I sort of poked them the wrong way then that's it but yeah you can see some damage just around there from when it dropped and scraped sort of thing because yeah it was a pretty big drop from his pocket to the ground so it kind of is what it is but the rest of it's in fairly good condition just some dust and you know fingerprints and stuff like that because I haven't really bothered to clean it but that's the only glass surface on this phone everything else is plastic or aluminium or something like that and uh yeah, it all works, as I demonstrated in my job lot video, the A51, that it all still works. This all still powers on and stuff. We will power this on. I just want to put it in its folded position like that. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it. With the Z Flip, I could just close that shut and I wouldn't worry about the screen getting damaged or whatever. With this, I feel the screen is just, I don't know, it feels like it just wants to snap in half. So now... I'm going to put that over to the side with the rest of its parts and stuff. We now come on to this. I may have to put the tripod up a little bit. That's as far as we can go. This cardboard box is a uh, wee that big. But just a tiny little front glass and camera glass. This big box just for that. I mean, it's not going to go missing, obviously, because if it was a small one, it probably would go missing. But this was supposed to be an overnight parcel. Well, yeah, I didn't really get it overnight. But it took two days from the US to Australia, which is good. It's just FedEx Australia appears to be a bunch of idiots. If you go to Google and type in FedEx Australia, you'll get a product review page that has like 1.3 stars or something like that with everyone saying, please, God, don't get these guys to deliver anything. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see the replacement parts. I wish I filmed myself pulling the glass off the front of the phone. The adhesive wasn't as strong as I thought, honestly. It just all sort of just came off in, you know, little bits and pieces and stuff. But hopefully this one has adhesive pre-applied. If not, I'll just stick some adhesive on myself and it should be okay. But basically, so far, this video is just story time and that's it. I mean, people kind of like this, but, you know, let's actually get into repairs. Okay. I see uh, tissue paper bag stuff. So we have the assembly, and then we have the camera lens just there. And I think that's it. They didn't include any bonuses. Nope, that's it. They even printed my name on these. That's kind of cool. So now let's have a look. Mobile Defenders said that these are authorized Motorola parts. They probably are. I hope they are. There we go. Okay. 
And our camera lens is just that little guy there. I'm lucky I didn't throw this out because I need to put that onto there. I was going to throw this whole entire assembly out. Very lucky I didn't. All right. So there's no adhesive on it. So I'm going to have to put adhesive on myself. But there it is. That's it. That's the OLED panel. Super thin. Look at that. So once that hit the ground, that was it. See you later. Bye-bye. Never going to work again. Never going to work again. What have I got to remove? All right. So I guess I'm removing that bit first. Okay. So now, according to the old LCD, I leave that red bit on. Okay, on the actual Moto itself, we've got two flex ribbons here. So I've just got that one, and then one just in there. So just two there. So what I have to do is pay attention to the folds of the old flex ribbons to the ones on this one. So I'm going to have to fold them into place. I don't feel comfortable doing that, but okay, sure, I guess I'll do that. Uh, okay, I have a feeling they stick down somewhere. That's fine. And see now, that has to fold like that. Oh, okay, I think I, I think I see where it's sort of meant to fold. This feels so janky. Uh, okay, well, let's attach the front screen first. Okay, okay, I have attached it. There we go. Uh, it should look a little something like this when it's all back together and stuff. Bending those flex ribbons is not fun, let me tell you that. All right, let's just be very, very careful and power it on. And we'll just see what happens. Come on. Okay. Oh, yes. There it is. Nice. Oh, look at the front screen. Oh, it said it was a JZA something. All right, so now if we just... Oh, God, I hate doing this. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, cool. Yep. Nice, that's what I want. So it should look a little something like that once I've placed the screen down. So that looks fairly good. All right, cool. So if I now do this, I can power it off from the front screen. That's cool. Awesome. All right, uh, good. Whew. That may not have looked so bad, but holy moly. So it looks like the bend is right there. Okay. All right. So I think those bends should be in the right place, hopefully. I remember that there was a piece of foam going along here somewhere, but I don't really remember where it was on the old glass. I don't think it matters. It's fine. We'll just ignore it and pretend it was never there. Next step, take the old glass off just here from the little camera lens. Now I'm fairly sure the new one comes with adhesive. That it does. Okay, good. So just to make sure there's no dust in there or anything like that because we want to make sure that this is nice and clean. That's not clean at all. There's actually a lot of gunk, kind of, I don't know if you can see it all just there, kind of just all built up in there. He did use it after the incident, so this does explain it, I mean, being all cracked and stuff, dirt's going to get into areas. Okay, so now we just get our new one, and we just line it up, like so. Stick that bad boy down, and that's it. We now have a camera lens. Well, glass for a camera lens. Now I'm going to reconnect this all again. <sighs> okay. And I'll just push it down ever so slightly. So there we go. That's what it should look like once again. Um, I just want to try the camera to make sure that 
there's no dust or anything inside of the camera lens or anything like that. It should be okay. See, I might have to re-bend the flex ribbons, I think, because I don't think they're in the right place. I think you double tap power? Nope. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, I don't understand. I don't understand either. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, camera looks fine. So I think success with that one. And let me just tell you all, this piece here weighs absolutely nothing. There's just nothing to it, man. So I've re-bent the flex ribbons just a little bit. Uh, I think that's fine at this point in time. I think that's quite reasonable. There's this little foam piece just here, which I think may be the piece that I was thinking of before, maybe. As I said, there was a foam piece that was on the old glass, and I did take it off and put it somewhere, but I think it might be gone at this point in time. There is no adhesive. We need to put adhesive on ourselves. So having a look, we can put a bit of adhesive around there. We might have to do two separate bits there. Now this is all cleaned up and everything. I've cleaned all the old adhesive off. That is all good and all gone. I think there might be a tiny little bit left over, but not too much. Basically just here, I can put two millimeter 3M tape there. I'll also put a couple just there, uh, one there, probably some one millimeter going along there. Hopefully it will all sit down and look very nice. So, I got 3mm, 1mm, and 2mm. So we'll have a look at 2mm. See if 2mm is going to fit. 2mm might be pushing it for the sides, actually. We're going to try and put 2mm on the sides just there. I think that might be alright. Sorry, this is 3mm, 3mm, not 2 I'm just going to cut off a test piece. So this is just a test piece here, just to see uh, roughly if I'm going to be okay with using that or not and I actually should be okay that's gonna go there and then I can also put another one mil going along the actual frame itself so I think that piece there should be okay just make sure that it all is stuck down like so so I'll save the extra 3m pieces just in case I need to go around but I'm going to do, yeah, three mil on each side. And pretty much you need to get this as close as you can to the edges of the frame, obviously. If you've never done 3M adhesive replacements before, you just basically line it up on the edging of the frame, stick it all down, and you should be fairly good. And then you've just got to cut it off where it starts to curve, because then if you have it all there on the curve areas, that's not going to be good. Progress. I'm happy with those pieces. The only thing that I'm worried about is this area here, where all the flex ribbons go down. I might have to just put probably, yeah, one millimeter just there. We'll see how we go anyways. Okay. Another piece added just there. I will probably do another piece going along there as well, but that should be okay for the time being. So I might be able to just stick this on top of there. Oh. Now, I don't think there's any guides actually on how to do this. I'm just really guessing here at this point in time. I really hope I'm going to be able to do all this. Okay, so at this point in time, I've got two strips at the top. They're two millimeter. This actually might be four millimeter, come to think of it. I'm not too sure anyways. I'll stick a piece just here. So there is some lines that go around here to indicate where the adhesive is supposed to go. Uh, but we're just gonna ignore that. So I haven't got corner pieces. I will just cut some of the two mil possibly and just stick a little corner piece on, I think. I've got that held down there, but this part I haven't and I'm hoping that this little bit and that little bit and that little bit's gonna hold it all down to place. I really, really hope it does. I can't tape up the light sensor, the flash, or the little uh, TOF just there as well. All that area needs to be exposed, so I can't do much there. I will stick a tiny weeny little bit down just there. I know this may look messy to some, but it's as best as I'm gonna be able to do, for the most part anyways. I will put some corner pieces on. So I've just checked over everything to make sure that 
it's all in place. The only one that I'm not happy with is this one here. I might redo this one. Yeah, I'll redo that one. I wasn't really happy with how I did that. I am covering the flash ever so slightly. It should be okay though. Because the tape is kind of transparent, it should be fine. Plus, I don't really plan on using this as a main phone, obviously. Uh, it's just more of a getting it back together and making sure that it looks nice. Before I continue, I want to do another test fit, just to make sure that it's all good. I hope it is. May I remind everyone at this point in time that I am dealing with paper-thin cables and a paper-thin screen one wrong move, and that's it. Kaboom, see you later. No more OLED, no more nothing. I have to be extremely, extremely careful with what I'm doing. Look, I think people, when they sit back and watch a video, they go, that's easy, I could probably do that. But in reality, this is a lot more difficult than it looks. So if I just push it down, I can see a little bit of it sticking out there, as you can sort of just see if I move it. Uh, but it should be okay. The flex ribbons, I think, just need to go down a little bit more. I'm pretty satisfied with the fit. And that still all works, which is good. I'm going to put some adhesive on the camera lens as well. I'm going to stick the camera glass down and make sure it's kind of the right way. No, it's not the right way, Smalls. Camera glass is down. Well, the camera lens. The camera thing. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The point where I start to take all of this off and we start to stick it down. I mean, if it doesn't work, there's nothing stopping me from, you know, taking this off and putting it back on, etc. But if I can avoid it, I will. So this part is also very precision based as well because you got to remove the tape for the adhesive and you really don't want to knock any of the other components see so just being really really careful you may not be able to see properly but that's because I'm kind of like got my head right next to this and I'm kind of just yeah concentration man I mean, if I had the pre-cut adhesive, it wouldn't have been, you know, so much of a problem, but I don't have the pre-cut adhesive. I kind of just have to guess. I think it's okay. Plus, we're cheaper here anyways. To find adhesive for this thing would have been... Actually, I could have bought adhesive off the uh, Mobile Defenders website. It doesn't matter. That's okay. <laughs> ah, it's all done. I'm not going to get adhesive sent from the US and pay $50 postage. Even if you just order the camera glass, that little, little tiny camera glass, that was going to be $50 express. So it's just a locked in cost that's associated with that. Um, I guess they don't send anything else because they want you to have the parts as soon as possible. And that makes sense. But, you know, 50 bucks shipping, what can I do? It was the only place I could get these parts from. The only other option was to buy like... Uh, one with a faulty um, main screen, which I did find a couple on eBay. But once again, they were kind of a bit expensive, like 300 US. And they were still selling. So it's kind of like, well, I'll just buy the, the new parts and stick it all down and it should be okay. I've taken all of the adhesive off. Now we stick it all down. I've clipped in the flex connectors. So now... I'm going to power it on, just to make sure. I'll make sure the touch works before I completely seal it down. I've still got, I, I kind of have sealed it on one corner, but I'll push it all down in a second. Whew. Man, I tell you, it's like surgery on a toothpick, you know? Well. That appears to be good. Yep. Alright. 
here we go. Oh, I really don't like the fit. I think the adhesive might be a little bit too thick. I think it's okay. It's in place. It's just that when I was pushing it down, it felt there was some resistance, and there is still a little bit of resistance going on. Oh, oh my god. I thought I cracked it then, but it was just the plastic. <gasps> Oh my lord, please don't ever do this. Pay the 550 and get Motorola to do it. Screw doing this again. I guess the main thing to do is to flip it up. Oh, okay. Oof. Okay, okay. It's good. It's good. Okay. Isn't that supposed to be displaying something? Uh oh. Oh. Okay. Everything's fine, Smalls. Everything's fine. As much as I don't want to take the front plastic off, I'm going to take the front plastic off just because, you know, I want to kind of see it in all its glory. <sighs> nice. Kind of the back corner is a bit iffy. Like, just going along there just to have a look. It's pretty much on as best as I'm going to get it, honestly, without proper adhesive. <sighs> Anxiety, man, it kicks in pretty fast when doing phone repairs, I'll tell you that. But I have a working front screen for my motor razor. Yay! But this also has just eSIM only and like a 2300 milliamp hour battery. Yay! <laughs> but it folds, it unfolds, it works. We can put it in retro razor mode. Yay! I, I I don't need to test anything else really. I could sit here and ramble on about the Moto Razor and how much of a really janky phone it is, but I think I've already made that perfectly clear on how janky it actually is. This long ass video was just all to stick a tiny piece of glass on there and then a screen on there, and that's it. That there was painful. The iFixit teardown that said it's about a 1 out of 10 to repair, I absolutely agree with that. I know it was only just two flex ribbons to connect it down, but they were so finicky, there wasn't any space to get to them, and then putting them down in a place and testing, and oh man, just please, if you've dropped your razor, I feel sorry for you that you have to do this, or just alternatively take it to Motorola and get them to do it, but if you ever attempt to do that yourself, oh man, that's that's pretty tricky. You gotta be really, really careful. And as I said, without the proper adhesive, it makes it 10 times more difficult than it should be. But there you go, my Moto Razor is complete. 470 Australian dollars later, I now have one. It is in my collection. It is not going anywhere. It is in fairly good nick now, a couple of scratches there, but that's it. Otherwise, some dust and all that, which I can easily take care of that. I may be able to buy a case for this somewhere. I'm not too sure where, but I will try and buy one for it. I actually wanted to do a review on the Razor, but I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> uh, because people have already done reviews on it. There's another model that's already out. I don't think I need to do much more with this and like everyone knows the camera on this everyone knows the performance of this so there's really nothing that i can bring new to the table so a repair is as close as you're going to get to a review of this and story time and stuff like that but at the end of the day i hope you all enjoyed what you've seen it was very anxiety inducing having to do this but it is done and i'm happy that it's done that I never have to do it again. I hope that the glass stays down. I may have to just push on the glass for another couple of extra seconds just to make sure that it's all good. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have a look at cases and see what I can buy. If I can just buy a little case for it, that might be nice. i tell you what would be 10 times worse, having to replace the internal OLED display, the flexible OLED display. Good luck doing that. <laughs> My Moto Razor 
now has a front screen that I can take mad selfies with and whip this out in public and people are going to be like, oh, what is that? It's the janky Razor Fold. That's what it is. Yay, it all works. I don't know. I feel bad probably having it in my pocket because dust and stuff will start accumulating around the sides of it now because it's not factory adhesive. It doesn't matter. I hope you didn't get as much anxiety watching this as uh, myself doing this repair as it was very anxiety inducing, but it is done now. It's nice and complete and it's nice and shiny. Uh, if I buy a case for it, I'll let you all know down in the comments um, and see what happens. But otherwise, everyone, this has been another random repair video from me. I hope you all enjoyed this for what it was. It wasn't meant to be anything special. Just a chill laid back video of me repairing something. Basically it was sticking down two things but it turned out to be a little bit more difficult than that but I'm glad that I successfully did it and I'm glad Mobile Defenders had the parts in stock. I'll leave a link to their website down below if you want to check them out. If you're looking for some really specific parts for a phone and you can't find them anywhere, try these guys. Um, they shipped it out basically a couple of hours later after I paid, and they obviously go for fast shipping, so if you need it immediately, there you go. So I'll link that down in the description below. Have a look, see how you go, but otherwise, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for coming along this little journey with me, and my battery's about to run out of my camera, so as always, take care, stay safe, be good people. Thank you very much for watching once again. I really do appreciate it. And if you like these random repair videos, let me know and I'll keep doing these. I'm pretty sure you all want to see more of these, but I'll ask anyways. All right, everyone. Be good people. And I'll see you in the next one. Thumbs up. Well, can you call these thumbs? <laughs> if you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.